So morning, everyone. Um, so we have Rod this morning. He's the MD of Print Leads. Um, so he's just going to talk a little bit about his organisation and his career journey. Um, and then we'll do questions at the end. Um, if you do have any questions, you can type them in the chat box and I'll read them out for you. Um, so I'll hand over to Rod now and um, he'll do a little bit of talking about his organisation. Okay, morning everybody. Um, Rod Fisher, MD Print Leeds. Um, born in Leeds, educated at Round Hay School. Um, and my career path started uh, really when I left, I left school at 17. Um, I had a handful of O-levels. I decided when I was in the lower six that uh, my, uh, I was doing maths, English, history was not for me. Um, so I decided to go into print. I had a cousin who was in the printing industry and he managed to get me a job as an apprentice uh, photo lipho retoucher, which sounds crazy looking back, but this was the times before um, any computerization. So it's hard to imagine in those days that everything was done by hand and there were no computers, no mobile phones. Um, and so I did a three year apprenticeship course. I was also working part time because I've always, I've always liked working. So I worked on the boats at Round Day Park in the summer. I worked as a petrol pump attendant and you won't remember it you lot, but there was um, a department store in, in Leeds called Schofields. And I used to work as a cleaner on an evening just to try and make extra money. Um, so that's that's where I really got into it. Um, so photo litho retouching in those days was if you took a photograph, um, you had to take it on to film. So it's hard to believe that now everyone's got digital cameras, but in those days, everything was photographed. The films were made into transparencies. The transparencies were made, were scanned so that it became a digital format so that it could be used. So now all those processes have gone and um, jobs now are just straight from a digital camera straight to the computer. Um, I remember in 84 when I bought my first Apple Mac, um, hard to believe it cost me £4,000 for a, a, a device that only had a, disc, a floppy disk that uh, I think it was 56K. So um, hard to believe that that's what data used to be. Um, as we are today, we, we work very closely with designers who produce lots and lots of different products. And I'll just try and show you a few products that we produce here. Um, so we have, I don't know if you've seen that one, Fentiman, Fentiman's, we do all their range of soft drinks, uh, so we print all the labels for them. Um, company called Neon, so they produce um, organic uh, beauty products and candles. So what, what we are predominantly today is a lithographic printer of labels uh, to the beverage and food industry. We have uh, 35 staff about here now, ranging from 17 years old to 63. So there's a vast array of, of different skill sets within the company. Um, we have a 18 year old uh, boy at the moment who's training on the printing press. So he's, uh, he's, he's actually on the Heidelberg press, which is a seven color press. It actually costs two and a half million pounds and within six months he's now working on that machine. Um, so we try and give everybody an opportunity in this company to, to learn all the equipment. The company has lots of different printing uh, applications or processes and um, we have poster printers, we have flatbed printers. The flatbed printers are uh, range from 3.2 meters to 1.6 meters across so we can do billboards um, and it ranges and it can also do up to 50 millimeter in depth so we've actually printed on doors before to get the uh, to get the effect we print on paper 
We print on plastic, metallized paper, we produce wallpaper, um, high spec wallpaper. Let's see what else we do. We do all sorts of things. Um, booklets, um, yeah, and posters. We, we also have um, cutting machines that can cut all the shapes and sizes, whatever you want, uh, digitally. So we just put in the electronic files, probably Illustrator files, and cut to shape. Um, if we're printing on the large presses, we have two of them, the Heidelbergs. The seven color, they print to a B1 sheet size. They are a German brand. They're well renowned in printing. They are the best you can buy. Um, if we use these, we have to make plates. So every job that we do has to be color split. So every, every label you see or every product is probably printed in cyan, yellow, magenta, and black, and then any special colors on top. So by doing that, we can achieve any color at all possible in the spectrum. Um, so jobs, jobs within the company, we have um, all files that come in from the designers go through the repro department. And the repro department really is just checking all the data within the files, whether it be in Illustrator or Photoshop or any other design package. We have the skills within the company to dissect the job and make sure it's correct for our presses. From there, it can be sent to anywhere within the company. Um, so we send all the files through, we rip them. So the ripping is just is almost just changing the language from where it comes in to start with to the machine it's going to go on. We've just purchased a, um, a reel-to-reel self-adhesive label machine. So this machine now can print digitally in seven colors on a reel. So it's like a toilet roll reel effect, uh, 300, sorry, 3000 meters at a time running at 50 meters a minute. Um, and we can cut to any shape. We can put a gold foil, silver foil on top of this, embellish it. We can put high raised varnishes on, we can do braille. Um, so really any product at all we can produce here now. The skills necessary really in printing today I, in my, my mind is um, attention to detail, uh, IT skills, engineering skills, and with those three things, printing is a great industry to get into. Um, I've been doing it now for far too long, 44 years. Um, I started with a, uh, a 5,000 uh, pounds in a small, almost a small garage. And uh, today we're on a four acre site with uh, 32,000 square feet factory with equipment worth probably about 10 million pounds. And um, it's quite hard to believe that that journey from being a young kid to now has, has gone the way it has. Um, so if, if any of you are interested in getting involved in print, um, it's a great industry to be in. Um, and it, really, I think that's it. Has anybody got any questions they'd like to ask about print or anything else? Um, so I've got some prepared questions, Rod. Yeah. Um, so we'll go through those. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can just type them in the chat box and I'll read them out for you. Um, so we'll start with the prepared ones. Um, so the first one is, what is the best route to gain employment at print? Print, I think, is to apply for apprenticeship. Um, we're, you know, we're looking every year, we take on two or three. We've, we've got one at the moment, but we've got three who just finished their apprenticeships. Um, we're trying to change the age group within the company because up to about eight years ago, the, the average age in the company was probably 50 with all the old skills. The new skills are all coming through. All the new equipment is very IT based. Um, so those, those are the skills we're looking for. And I'm always happy to show people around. Um, and we're always looking for good young people. 
Brill, thank you. And um, the next question is, what types of roles do you recruit for at print? Um, so is it just apprenticeships or do you do any other roles? Uh, we have all sorts of roles. So um, we have the office staff. We've got about eight office staff. We're, we're always looking for somebody to come into the office um, to learn the system. So we have a, a management information system within the company. It's called CERM, C-E-R-M. Um, it's from Belgium. It's very complicated, but it's not complicated if you're an IT whiz kid. Um, you know, it's, um, it's hard for some of the older people to, to grasp. So we have office uh, jobs available. Uh, we, we're not just needing highly skilled people. So we have opportunities if people want to be in the finishing lines. Um, so there are, there, are, there are opportunities. We've got opportunities on the digital presses, the litho presses. Um, so there are, you know, there's numerous opportunities within this company and it's a growing company at the moment. And um, do you need any particular qualifications or grades to work at print? Hard to believe, but no. But um, the people I'm getting through for interview these days, um, do seem to have uh, reasonable qualifications. It's a bit tricky that because I come from a background where you know I made a right mess of my O levels. Uh, I, re I reset them all, um, and then I, I, I did my o levels. But I, so it's more about the attitude of people. Um, you need people who want to work and learn because there's so much to learn in this industry, and there's so much opportunity then to travel all over. You know, once we can travel again. Um, there's opportunities within the world, you know, in the world. And um, so when you're recruiting staff, um, what do you look for? So do you look for any particular transferable skills or specific work experience or would any part time work be beneficial? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I interviewed somebody yesterday um, and he, to be, he was only 15, which was oh, the youngest wow. person I've ever, I've ever, ever interviewed. And um, he, had a, he had a milk round and he started work at 2.30 every morning before I went to school. And I couldn't believe it. And I spoke to the, the, the company, the milk company. I didn't even know it was allowed, to be honest. But, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I just want people who are hard, you know, who want to work. Um, but people with engineering or IT skills, I want them even more. Um, so we, ha we have a, an IT specialist here who is happy to carry on training people. He trains all my staff, but he is employed here. Um, as for engineering, it's just understanding how the machines work. Um, the, you know, the rollers, it's got seven colors. It's probably got 36 different rollers on the machine. Uh, it's, it's a dangerous machine if you don't know what you're doing. It runs at speeds of 18,000 sheets an hour. So you know you put it in one end and it's hard to believe but it's the size of a well it's longer than a coach a bus coach um and the sheet of paper will be through before you can get you know it's through in an instant um but it has to be right and everything has to be working so it, it's, it's having people who have that attention to detail and um, when you're looking on an application or a CV, uh, what stands out when you're shortlisting? So what do you look for when you're sifting through CVs? Yeah, it's a tricky one because it's, I'm not an expert at looking through CVs. And believe me, I've got it wrong over the years as well as right. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's such a difficult one. You know, I just want somebody who's shown that they, they're willing to do you know, other jobs, mucking on things uh, and not be uh, prima donnas and not for me. You know, we don't need people like that. Um, you know, we've never had, and maybe we will, but we've never had kids who've come with, you know, A stars, nine A stars and all this. And, uh, you know, we have had university people who've joined the company with degrees. Um, I even had a bank manager once who packed it all in and came here. Oh, wow. Uh, so it's hard to, hard to believe. He was actually our bank manager at one point, and uh, he loved coming here, and he said, you know, I want to get into print. 
So you just never know. It's very difficult. And mm. if I was swamped with 50 CVs, um, it's a nightmare. But I think it is for a lot of companies. But at least I do read them all. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and and I, do, I do reply to them all too. Oh, that's good. Yeah, because sometimes our students do find that when they are applying for jobs, when they're thinking about uh, life after college, um, they find that really difficult when they don't get a response um, from where they've applied. So that's nice to hear that you do you do always respond because um, there's a lot of companies that do that at the moment. Um, so that's nice to hear. And um, we've had a student question through that kind of relates to this. So I'll ask it now. And um, so they've asked at interview, uh, what are you looking for in a, in a prospective employee? I tend to look for bright eyes. I just look for contact with the eyes um, to see if there's a spark there at all. Um, some people, you know, I, I come out of it and I say, dead eyes, not for me. And I, I don't know if that's right or wrong. I'm not a trained HR person. I just know, I just know people, I think. Um, it's enthusiasm. Uh, and that gets you, especially in this sort of industry, um, you know, one of our apprentices has a speech impediment, but it didn't matter. You know, he, he was so keen to work um, because I always take them on a probationary period, three months, and it's up to the person to, uh, you know, to prove themselves. And the next question is, uh, what advice would you give to a 17 year old you? <laughs> that is really hard. It is a tough one, that one. I don't know. I think you just got to believe in yourself and go for it. You know, I've done some crazy things over the years. I've taken some impossible risks. Um, we've nearly gone bust as a company probably four times. And it's a roller coaster. Um, I just think you've got to believe in yourself. Don't. My, I always say to people, don't ever knock yourself. There's enough people out there who'll do it for you. So, you know, that's... I've got four kids. They're not in the industry, um, but um, you know they're all very positive-minded. Perfect. Thank you. That's really good advice, um, especially for our students. And then we've got a final question. And um, so, is there anything specific our students could be doing right now um, to support their journey into engineering? Uh, into engineering, I don't know, but into printing, you know, I would look up. The press, the Heidelbergs, Camorras, all the major manufacturers. You just need to know what's going on. Do your research. Um, because if somebody came to me and said, oh, you know, I know all about your presses and I know this and I've read this, it makes the world a difference. Um, so it's just research. Yeah, perfect. Um, so we haven't had any more questions through. Um, so if anyone does think of any more questions, uh, they want to ask Rod, so if you are interested in the apprenticeships that he's talked about, um, you can send the questions to me and I'll send them over email and get back to you. Um, and it would be nice, Rod, when coronavirus restrictions have ended, if we could do a, a class visit maybe and look at your machinery and the engineering sort of things, um, that'd be really good. Yeah, absolutely, because it's, it's not an easy thing to talk about, Prince. But it's such a, a, vi a visual thing, it's so easy. And it's, this is a large factory full of um, some incredible equipment. Um, so, you know, I'm happy to do a show round when things get better. Yeah, and hopefully um, it'll be next academic year, fingers crossed. Um, we should be able to organise that. Um, yes, yeah, so we'll be in touch about that. Um, but I think that's everything for today. So thank you, everyone. Um, and as I say, if you do have any more questions for Rod, you can send them through to me. Okay, thank you very much.